Boston Dynamics is the most legendary company in the world of robotics was was a couple of years ago. But lately, we've been hearing a lot more about Tesla and Figure, as well as other humanoid robot developers. Has the era of Massachusetts-based engineers come to an end? The company is now essentially decapitated. Its founder, Mark Reibert, has stepped down and switched from engineering to studying artificial intelligence at Boston Dynamics AI Institute. Will this change help the company regain its former success? To make sense of it all, we explored the most interesting twists and turns in Rybert's biography. We've watched all of his recent interviews, and we are ready to share with you the incredible story and plans for the future of the brilliant roboticist who made Hawaiian shirts a part of his image. If you want to help us with YouTube algorithms, then please give this video a like, click the bell, and share. And if you have a famous personality in mind, be sure to leave a comment, and we'll get right on it. That's it for the introduction. Let's hit it. But first, another giveaway. Watch this video to the end to find out the rules of the contest. $50 certificate will go to the winner that we'll announce in our following videos. So be sure to subscribe and keep an eye for updates. Okay, now, let's get it. Mark Rybert is 74 years old, of which at least 40 he has devoted to robotics. Mark tells us little about his childhood. We only know that his father influenced his choice. Rybert Sr. at one time dreamed of being an aviation engineer, but his parents didn't approve of their son's choice, so he had to become an accountant. Boring. He didn't abandon his dream, however. As Mark recalls, the basement of their house was always full of tools, equipment, and electronics. His father was always collecting something. Little Mark watched his work, and when his father was not at home, he tried to assemble things himself. So the future founder of Boston Dynamics was already interested in technology at a very early age, but one moment was decisive. In 1974, when Rybert was a graduate student and studied under the guidance of Berthold Florn at MIT, one day after a lecture, Rybert found himself in the professor's lab where on a table lay a robotic arm disassembled into a thousand pieces. Quote, when I saw that, I knew I was a roboticist from that day forward. End quote. That encounter spurred graduate student Rybert to write software that studied the dynamics of a robotic arm. He spent 18 years as an academic researcher and worked as a full-time faculty member at many institutions. First at the private Carnegie Mellon University, there in 1980, he founded and led the Leg Lab, which helped create the scientific basis for highly dynamic robots. Instead of building slow and methodical machines, Rybert sought to endow his creations with the energy and dynamics inherent in human and animal movements. Then, Ryber developed the first self-balancing jumping robot. The first machine, the one-legged hopper, went into operation in 1982. It was a simplified version, then a 3D version was produced in 1983, and a year after, a four-legged quadruped robot appeared. You could say it was Big Dog in its early stages. The room where the robot was housed stored a hydraulic pump with hoses connected to the robot, and in the next room was a computer for cooling. The robot had actuators, gyroscopes, and other sensors, but all the computing power was self-contained. Work continued, but as Mark tells it, he often wondered how to get to the next level. The impetus for action came from filming in Hollywood. Rybert, as a professor at MIT, brought robots to a set of the movie Rising Sun. The filming process lasted a week, but during this time, the team encountered difficulties and fully realized how different lab conditions were from reality. For example, the temperature was constantly changing. This was a key takeaway. In the future at Boston Dynamics, to make sure the robots didn't malfunction, they would be tested under natural conditions. Quote, Probably the smartest thing I did was find other people. Now, when I look at the Boston Dynamics team, I marvel at the engineering team that makes things work." End quote. Together with a team of 12 engineers, he founded Boston Dynamics. That was in 1992. In the beginning, the company was engaged in physical modeling. The basic idea was not to build robots, but to use a dynamic modeling tool that was developed for robotics. But working with Sony, the engineering team returned to robotics. At that time, tools were developed to program a small humanoid robot called Creo. This small humanoid robot was capable of moving and even dancing. 
The model didn't make it to the market, however, but it was a good start for the company. From that moment on, all of Boston Dynamics developments began to come down to robots. The next important milestone for the company was the creation of a surgical simulator on which novice doctors could train to perform surgeries. All robotics techniques were used in its creation. The team decided to show the development at a couple of medical trade shows. At the time, Boston Dynamics staff was small, with no one possessing the marketing skills to promote a new product. Now, the simulator generated interest among surgeons, but no one offered money to purchase it. Quote, we realized we needed to move on. Collectively, it was decided to close this project. We started to engage in robotics, which determined the development of the company. After that, Big Dog was created. It was so good for its time, end quote. The robot was designed to carry 400 pounds or 200 kilos, but in testing, Big Dog actually carried 1,000 pounds or 500 kilos at a time. It was a small victory for the company, quote, up until that point, we were just researchers kicking the can and wondering what we could improve on from what we had before. But we didn't have the idea that we were actually creating something useful." End quote. Rybert considers the second important moment for the company to be working with Google. In 2013, Boston Dynamics changed ownership for the first time. The project was acquired by Google, in addition to eight other robotics companies in its portfolio. That same year, Atlas Humanoid Robot was revealed. Quote, in the beginning, I wasn't a humanoid enthusiast. This goes back to the question of what is their functionality? As a robotics expert, I think functionality really matters. That's probably why I avoided humanoid robots from the beginning." End quote. The engineer's work on this project was led by DARPA, an agency of the U.S. Department of Defense. It's possible that this collaboration may have caused Mark to change his mind. Until two years ago, Atlas was considered the most advanced humanoid robot in terms of its capabilities. Now, compared to Tesla's Optimus, it looks less functional. A key reason for Tesla's superiority over Boston Dynamics is the use of artificial intelligence. While Atlas has to be programmed by humans to start moving, the Tesla bot learns new actions thanks to AI. Check out our video comparing the two in the description below. Elon and Mark are often compared. Both are outstanding engineers who are changing the current reality. For a long time, Rybert didn't comment on his attitude towards Musk, but in a recent podcast, he clearly explained his position. Quote, I admire Elon as a technologist, and what he did with Tesla was just stunning. End quote. In his opinion, Elon was inspired to create Optimus by the success of the Atlas. Quote, I don't think Optimus today is the same as Atlas. It's quite difficult to compare them. I think he sees what Atlas is doing and that inspires him to improve." End quote. Mark also shared that he would love to have a meeting between the two humanoid robots. Leave your comments and let us know if you want to see this interaction take place. Contrary to many of his younger colleagues, Rybert believes that robots with AI is a good thing, but the hardware also needs a lot of work and improvement. You can't mold a robot from off-the-shelf components and expect it to have human dexterity. Today, even companies like Tesla and Figure are nowhere near Boston Dynamics' success in dynamic artificial intelligence. But in the real world, it could use that dexterity and balancing skills. Another point of comparison between the two entrepreneurs is commercial success. As it turns out, it's not enough to put together something brilliant, it's important to sell it successfully. Commerce was never a part of Mark's plans. According to him, before, there were no products on the market with which they had to compete. Initially, Boston Dynamics received much of its funding from U.S. military. Then the funding came from the company's owners, Google, SoftBank, and Hyundai. Each of them tried to steer the company towards, you know, making money. In June of 2020, so 30 years after its founding, Boston Dynamics began selling its first commercial robot spot. The new CEO says the company plans to become a mass producer of new robots with advanced capabilities. Boston Dynamics' second commercial product is the Stretch robot. It was tasked with making the company profitable. It's too early to talk about the results, but demand for Stretch has so far outpaced its production rate, and developers continue to improve the robot software so that it could be easily integrated into warehouses without any specialized knowledge. 
At the end of 2020, Korean car giant Hyundai acquired Boston Dynamics for $1.1 billion. By comparison, Mark Zuckerberg, founder of Facebook, bought WhatsApp in 2014 for $19 billion. Elon Musk bought Twitter for $44 billion. For such an advanced company in the world of robotics as Boston Dynamics, this seemed like peanuts. The new owner was getting unique developments with software. Under the terms of the agreement, Hyundai Motors would get 80% of Boston Dynamics and the previous owner, SoftBank, would be left with 20%. That's when the news broke that Mark was leaving the company and Rob Plater, the company's chief operating officer, would take his place. A few years later, Mark would share his opinion on the company. Quote, I believe Boston Dynamics is in good hands. The CEO has a goal of commercial success and Hyundai is providing tremendous support. End quote. Mark also notes that Hyundai are enthusiasts who are committed to bringing future technologies to life, which is why Boston Dynamics developments are so important. We don't know how sincere Mark is in his statements, but he has managed to remain a significant force in the company. In August, Hyundai Motor Group announced the founding of the Boston Dynamics AI Institute, a research institute designed for fundamental research in the field of, you guessed it, artificial intelligence, robotics, and quote-unquote smart cars. Hyundai and Boston Dynamics invested more than $400 million in its initial phase of the project. The institute is headed by none other than Mark Rybert. As the engineer says, colleagues and acquaintances were surprised when they heard about this appointment. Quote, I've been doing robots for over 40 years. Some people think I'm at a dead end, right? Well, actually, the situation I found myself in inspired the creation of the Artificial Intelligence Institute. I have an exciting new challenge in front of me. End quote. The Institute focuses on the most important problems of robotics and artificial intelligence. In the summer of 2023, at the World Robot Conference, Mark Rybert shared his plans for the AI Institute. He talked about three projects. The first one, Watch, Understand, and Do, involves training robots with the help of artificial intelligence. The actual mechanics is hidden in the name. The robot watches the actions of a person, remembers, and repeats. Doesn't it remind you of something? Earlier this year, Figure demonstrated its humanoid robot capable of brewing coffee. To acquire the new skill, the humanoid watched relevant videos of humans. Although the robot's actions are imperfect, the result is still impressive. Will Rybert's team be able to surpass the competition? Place your bets in the comments below. The next project is called Inspect, Diagnose and Fix. The robot analyzes the cause of equipment failure and fixes it on its own. The engineer claims that the technology can be used not only at home, but also in a factory. Mark also said that the Institute is studying laws and ethical issues at crossroads of government regulation, technology, ethics and requests from businesses. Robotics has advanced far in the past few years and modern robots have almost ceased to surprise people. Quote, I want to remind you that a robot may look like a human, move like a human, but it's different from us. We can ask questions to make sure. Does the robot have a human brain? No. Does it have human feelings? No. It also doesn't speak human language. So to make them as useful as humans, we need to provide them with other things. End quote. According to Mark, robots are still quite dumb and not at all like humans. At the moment, they have impressive physical skills, but to become useful, they need a combination of athletic and cognitive intelligence. We talked about these two in our previous videos, the link for which you will find in the description. That being said, there is a competition going on in the world of artificial intelligence to see who can achieve new results faster. In the 32 years that Boston Dynamics has been around, the market has changed. Musk. Altman and other specialists appeared who have the advantage of age. Quote, the demands of the participants in terms of computer hardware and the skills of the team are such that it's much harder to hire talent. So now I think a lot more about competition from a cognitive perspective. End quote. Rybert differs from his younger colleagues in that he is not afraid of building super intelligent robots. He's primarily an engineer and sees AI based systems as valuable tools. In a recent interview, he asks the interviewee, so I ask you a question. Do you think there's anybody smarter than you in the world? Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Does, do you find that threatening? No. So I don't understand, even if computers were smarter than people, why we should assume that that's uh, a threat. 
Rybert is a rebel. There's a reason why the logo of the Boston Institute for Artificial Intelligence features a Hawaiian shirt, which the engineer has worn for years in defiance of public opinion. He's committed to his idea that in the future, companion robots can be integrated into everyday life. His vision encompasses machines capable of outstanding physical achievements and high levels of intellectual support, heralding an era of transformation in the way people live and work. For now, the legendary engineer is not revealing all his cards. We can only wait for him to announce a new technological breakthrough. What do you think? Will Mark Rybert be able to surprise everyone yet again? Thank you uh, all, and thanks to the team at Boston Dynamics who did all the hard work behind this. And now, time for the giveaway. $50 certificate to the lucky winner who will be chosen by a random comment picker and of course follows the rules. Here they are. A. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and to our Instagram. B. Answer the following question in the comments. Here it is. What year did Mark Rybert obtain his PhD? Let us know in the comments what you think is the answer and we shall announce the winner in the following videos. Let us know in the comments and subscribe to the channel, like this video, and stay tuned for more from the world of high tech.